One day I came home from doing errands around two in the afternoon, uh, tired, wanted to just sit down and have a little rest and uh, went to my, my lazy boy chair, got all comfortable, closed my eyes. And I heard the Lord say, go to IHOP. And I thought, Lord, it's two in the afternoon. I'm tired. I'm not hungry. Um, I don't, I must be hearing wrong. So I just closed my eyes and relaxed. Anyway, I heard three times. On the third time, I said, okay, Lord, I don't get it. You know, I'm not hungry, but I trust you. So I got up and then I said, wait a minute, Lord, which one do you want me to go to? I live right between two. And one is a very new building and the other one was the old original with the blue roofs. And I said, which one do you want me to go to? And he showed me the one with the blue roof. So I got in my car and I went, I walked in and very small place, nobody was there, not one customer, but me. So I thought I'm not hungry. Um, so I'll just order some coffee and I'll wait. Uh, surely the Lord's going to bring someone. So I sat there and drank coffee and water for a good 45 minutes. No one came in. So I began to get my stuff together thinking, well, maybe when I pay on the way out, that, that's who I'm supposed to witness to because there's nobody but the cook, the waiter, and me. As I was getting my keys and things together, I did hear a young man's voice right behind me in the booth behind me. And as I got up to leave, I looked and I had heard him ordering and he ordered almost everything on the menu. So as I got up, I turned around and they were bringing his food, covering the table with plates and dishes and a very handsome young man, about 22 or three. And <clears throat> I don't have a, any trouble speaking to strangers. So I smiled and I said, well, you're either very, very hungry or there's a lot of people coming. And he, he laughed and he said, no, it's, it's all for me. And I noticed he had a smile on his face, but his eyes said something very different. They were very sad. And so I knew this is who I'm supposed to be talking to. And so I began to talk to him and about the food. And, and I said, it looks like you need some help. And he said, well, why don't you sit down? Because we had talked a few minutes by that time. So when I sat down, I began to ask him, uh, where, do you, where do you worship? Where do you go to church? And he said, well, there's a story behind that. He said, I was raised in church and I'm from a Christian family. And then he got very, very sad and tears came in his eyes and he said, actually, I'll share something with you. I have a rope in my car in the back seat. I'm on my way up to the woods to hang myself. This is my last meal. And my heart just fell. And the Lord said, you have to tell him. You've got to, you've got to witness to him. So um, he, he went on to tell me that when he left the house, he said to the he called out and he said, God, if you're real, as I've always thought you were, and you really love me, then send someone to stop me. And he looked at me and he began to cry. And he said, you're that someone. And so I was able to pray with him. And he was so excited, the joy that came over him and the light, he just lit up and he said, I'm going back home to tell my parents they didn't know about this. I'm going back home and tell them I'm ready to serve the Lord. He proved himself to me. I'm going home. The rest of my life is dedicated to him. And we prayed together and we hugged and he, he went home. And I've actually never seen him since, but the Lord has always brought him to my heart. We really need to learn to have blind faith. It's all about trust and listening to the Lord, listening for his voice. And when he speaks, be willing to say, yes, Lord, use me, Lord. I'm willing and I'm able. I'll just walk on your path. I'll do what you tell me to do. And the, the living a life like that, there is nothing greater in the world than trusting the Lord and walking with Him in ministry.